The second speaker is Muhammad Yunus. He's a senior research fellow with the Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies. He unfortunately cannot be here with us today, and he has sent us a video message, and we will play that. Honorable Chair, distinguished panelists, and colleagues, a very good afternoon to you all. Labor force participation is the intention to work. The actual technical work is the employment date. And in that case, one can see that the FDMNs only, it is 31% compared to 54% in the case of the host community, okay, the actual employment rate. These are the, the 15 and, and higher age individuals who had intention to work. Now these are actually working. So a significant gap between the host community and take care of the FDM and community. And we found that uh, it is, uh, as I said, 31% vis-a-vis 54% actual employment rate. And it is really pronounced in the case of female workers for FDMN only 5% of and actually employed to be 21% in the case of host community. And uh, in terms of sector wise distribution, we found that in the case of displaced nationals, they are equally split one third, one third in agriculture, industrial services. But uh, in the host community, they are lumped between two whose sectors agriculture and uh, service which account uh, for about 84% of the workers and wage employment is the dominant form of uh, employment both uh, for the MDMs and the, uh, the host community. So uh, again uh, we looked into uh, the prospect of employment using probability regression and the marginal effect as it was found in the case of descriptive statistics. This corroborates the same thing, uh, about 34% lower for FDM and the employment tech prospect. Uh, and for female, it is about 47%. And the uh, bizarre thing we noticed is that tech, uh, per capita assistance received in fact, increases the prospect of employment. One explanation could be that the assistance they receive is not enough for their pick and to sustain. Therefore, they can need well. They need additional they need additional income to satisfy their other other needs, which remain unfulfilled through assistance. Uh, this is the difference between number of days over the last one year. The word you see there is a marked difference between the host community and the FDM in terms of number of days worked. While the FDMs worked during last one year only 58 days, the host community, not surprisingly, worked for 138 days. And and between the new and old webs, we found that new FDMs worked less number of days than their old counterparts. One explanation could be that the, the, the assistance was introduced first in, within, the, within the camps where the new waves of displaced Myanmar nationals lived then it later on spread into the, the old camps. Uh, so we, we found that, that the same thing again too, we did take it, it uh, uh, estimated the Heckman type of labor supply equation with, take, with employment profit selection and, and this uh, results, uh, the first two that FDMs work less number of days, females work less than their male counterparts this uh, what we found in the descriptive studies. What is new in this uh, is the wage elasticity, which is uh, actually uh, close to unity, meaning that uh, uh, one person increase in take wages lead to a one person increase in the level in, in the labor supply. And the assistance uh, does not affect the labor supply with 
which we found. Here in this case, not only the labor supply, we estimated the miserian wage equation again with the Heckman selection and to assess the return to education and return to, ex and to experience. And we found that the return to education is positive, but it is very small, only 0.7% with additional year of education increases wage rate only by 0.7%. But the return to education is relatively sizable. Uh, every additional year of experience leads to 2.7% increases in the wage rate. Female workers' earning is about 16% lower than their male counterpart. And the FDMN workers' uh, uh, earnings is about 31% lower than the host community workers. So this is the earning side. Then we decompose. These, these differences, as you may recall, we found that the prospect of employment of the FDMN is lower, the labor, their labor supply is lower, their wage rate is lower. So what is driving this? For that, we undertook the blinder Ohaka decomposition. Why? This is discrimination or this is because of the endowment. And we found that except for the wage equation uh, for employment, for labor supply, I, it is not significant. The difference is by and large driven by the return effect, which sometimes dubbed as the discrimination. But one should uh, take that with a grain of salt. There are unobservable factors that may lead to this set. Uh, these differences and only in the case of wages it is the earning effect that is also driving the case so what is the conclusion the return effect dominates uh, and return effect in the case of the employment prospect and labor supply it captures about 100 percent of the gaps and it captures uh, more than three-fourths of the gaps, gaps in the case of wage rates so what is the impact given that uh, in the conventional labor market studies, this, this is called a discrimination against a particular group. Oh, and uh, people uh, really vilify their differences. Given that, as I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, that Bangladesh is not a signatory of the uh, refugee convention and the protocol, the dominance of the return effect and the interaction effect is a blessing for Bangladesh's point of view, if it is not good for the FDMNs. So what do we found? We found that uh, the labor supply of uh, uh, host community is lower, their wage rate is lower. This wage rate take, uh, would be further accentuated at what's effect. In view of the fact that the likelihood of FDMN labor force participation is 8% higher, so what will happen in the absence of administ uh, strict administration, this differential wage rate will not be sustainable in the long run. What will happen? There will be a lower wage rate when they, they somehow integrate with our uh, Bangladeshi national uh, labor force. So what needs to be done? Bangladesh government and the development partners need to undertake policies that could forestall the plummeting wage rates in the region. Otherwise, there would be adverse welfare effect and take care the consequent adverse effect. So these are the things Bangladesh needs to look in deep into the case, how to protect the welfare of the host community and also not hurting this displaced population. Thank you very much.